I'm here to talk about geo-integration and sustainable development. And I must confess, my, I have too many slides. So bear with me. What is sustainable development? During the presentation, I wanted to keep these questions in mind. GIS, spatial data infrastructure, geospatial information management. Do they really facilitate national development? But I'm speaking to a crowd and I'm sure might be this question is a kind of redundant. Am I correct? Because you know that it facilitates development, but we'll talk about it. What is the link between national spatial data infrastructures and sustainable development? And what are the ingredients? And how can you benefit from what is happening globally? Are you aware of what is happening globally? Presentation really will be focused on three broad areas. We'll look at what is happening globally, because that's a perspective that I want to share with you from where I'm sitting, and how the global perspective impacts what we're doing and happening in geospatial policy making generally. Then I look at some regional initiatives and then we'll go on to some national things and I'll close. In terms of global geospatial information management, should we find out? All right, the world will face many challenges, all countries, nobody is indifferent. We have well, I think that in Trinidad, I understand that your urban populations are very small. Um, but we have challenges in terms of managing our national resources, natural resources, pardon me, crime, biodiversity, how we manage nature, access to water, food security, how do we make our country better and the lives of our people better. And this is a slide that we use in GGIM in our secretariat that geography is important to solving our problems because with geography, we're able to know thing, where things are happening. And we're only able to measure and monitor what we're doing using geography. And I thought that it was important to put in perspective some statistics on Trinidad, small country, you have reasonable great roads of great, um, commendable in terms of what is happening globally. Uh, unemployment not so bad, you're below double digits, very good. Uh, what was interesting for me was that your labor force, 62%, which was significantly high, is in the service industry. I thought petroleum, construction, and those areas would have been some big areas, but labor force is in the service industry. And it says a lot in terms of what it means in moving forward as a country. Interestingly, because when you think about GIS, spatial data infrastructure, it cannot be subtracted from what is happening in your telecommunication industry. So we need to look at the uptake in terms of use of cellular, we use to how many persons have access to a computer, internet, and your rates are high. I understand that children at school now have access to tablets. But uh, a statistics I don't have here is that only 44% really have internet access at home. How does that impact our use of technology? Cellular rates are very high. 
And of course, you know, everything is being ported to cellular applications and apps, important. And so when we look at sustainable development, so we have painted a picture of what is happening in terms of your st statistics. We know that we have global challenges, challenges. What's the response? At the global level, the United Nations in the 20, 25th of September um, adopted Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. What it's about is a blueprint for the next 15 years that tells our member states, so our 149 member states that make up the United Nations, that there are 17 goals, 169 targets, and we're currently working on the indicators. How do we implement all this? How do we make the lives of our people better? And in order to do the measuring and monitoring, we need data. And the data, we need it from the local level nationally to the global levels. But where does this data come from? And it's, is it provision sustainable? And this is a question that most governments will be faced with in the next couple of years. And how many of these goals capture and include elements of geography? And if you look at them clearly, poverty eradication, food security, marine resources, healthy well-being, water, sanitation, nearly every one of them has an element of geography. So what's the role of your mapping agencies, your geospatial agencies in this whole agenda? And the, those negotiating the goals and targets and outcome documents have no real idea of the role that geography plays. And this has been an issue at the global level in the United Nations. The nexus between policy and geospatial has not been what it ought to be. And our role is to, has been to improve the knowledge and understanding of what geospatial information can do to support sustainable development. Because if you have poor data quality, lack of timely data, disaggregated data, we are not able, these are the major challenges, and we're not able to have the information to support what we need to do. So in terms of responding, the UN in 2011 created the Committee of Experts on Global Geospatial Information Management. This is an intergovernmental committee of experts made up of heads of national geospatial entities or national mapping entities. And we convene annually in New York, and there, there's an agenda. To date, we have like a 15-point agenda, and it encourages discussion and global consultation and global policy making. And this is what this slide is about. And this group, it's, 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 it's was created to enhance and coordinate global geospatial information management. The UN has existed for many years, but it has never had a global oversight for geospatial information management. And I think, believe that this is one of the reasons why the uptake in governments has not been as what it ought to be. So you will have, there's interest groups and there's conventions for biodiversity, climate change, and the UN basically just use GIS for mapping, for peace operations, for deployment of forces. So there was no concerted agenda to address countries in terms of using geospatial information to manage their resources. So this was a response to that lack within the global context. And how do we set up our work? We have divided the world in five regional groups, Asia Pacific, Africa, Arab states, Americas, and Europe. And it is anchored, we hope to anchor each regional group within the economic commissions of the UN. So the countries here meet annually in some part of the world. Last week I was in Mexico. Mexico chairs UNGGIM Americas and they had their annual meeting 
and they have subcommittees and they work together and their work dovetails into the global agenda, which we'll talk about more. So this is the framework, more or less, of how we have fashioned to enable countries within each, each region to work together and dovetail up into the global agenda. And the part, a great part of the work is about collaboration and partnerships. So we have been working with these various groups, the FIGS, Geospatial Media, JBGIS, which is the Joint Board for GIS. So this is an association of all international professional agencies. I think there are 13 members. So ICO, which is the Cartographic Association, FIG, OGC, they are all members of JBGIS. So they come to the UN and they have one voice. GSDI are also members. And I know that it is important for member states also to be members of some of these organizations, the International Hydrographic Association. So this is how we work, stakeholder consultation, partnerships, because we recognize that many, many international agencies and the private sector are working in the field and we want to reduce duplication. And the more we work together, the better it is, the more synergies we have. Because, for example, the meeting that was held in Mexico was a tripartite meeting. We have geospatial media and we had geo and GGIM Americas meeting for one week. So it was three meetings in one place. And everybody recognized how wonderful it was to have all the interactions, the networking happening. And it was not only good professionally and technically, but it was also good economically. It reduced these people travel times. It made the occasion beneficial. It wasn't like at a loss for any of the groups. They all benefited. And these are some of the practices that we need to replicate in country. And this is more or less our work program, how it fits together. Uh, the things at the bottom in the boxes are some of the work areas and governance standards, capacity building, spatial frameworks are just some overarching features of the work. And I'm sure if you look at your own spatial data work in country, you'll recognize that these are things that are most important to you. Um, a major achievement has been the resolution that was adopted by the General Assembly in February of this year, where it we agreed, well, the 149 countries of the United Nations agreed that uh, countries need to have uh, a geodetic reference frame, and we all need to work together to have a global refer reference frame. Why this is important is a global policy position. And uh, I was heartened by a uh, conversation I had with Gaia, representative from Guyana, he said to me, I welcome this resolution. I was able to take it to my government, my permanent secretary. And with this piece of uh, resolution, I was able to gain traction in my country to get the support that was needed to do some of his SDI work, and he was very, very pleased about it. And this is the purpose for these re resolutions. Oftentimes we say, well, in Jamaica, we say that change doesn't happen until somebody from outside pushes you to make it happen. And in this instance, this is what happened. Because something was coming from outside and it was a global initiative, it was the owners for the country to say, open their eyes and recognize that this needs to happen. So we need to put some resources to make it happen. Another achievement, of course, China is a mega power these days in many areas, but they have been supporting our work. There's a China Trust Fund, and they went ahead. They recognized that there's an issue, you know, the land cover, land use issue, and some agencies are responsible for land cover, some agencies are responsible for land use. Do you have a common land use map? And it is something that nations grapple with, and there is an issue that the globe grapples with. Many different agencies have maps that they say are land cover maps. China went ahead using their own satellite and 
um, the imagery that is now readily available out of the USGS Landsat and created a global land cover map, which they have termed the Global Land 30 datasets. I don't know if you are aware of it. They have a website you can go on and you can download this data set and use it. They have a web application that allows you to have access to this data. And it is being ported through uh, the UN. It was given to us. But we're still working out modalities. But you can go on China's website and download this data set because they're making it freely available. I spoke earlier about the fact that at the global level, there is the whole thing of not recognizing the importance of geospatial information in the sustainable development process. And what we've been trying to do is to influence the process and the development of the indicators, because this is still ongoing, to use geospatial information to be integral to the monitoring and management process. And we were able to have them include in this very important document that it is important to use geospatial information for sustainable development monitoring. So in summary, the UNGGIM machinery secretariat is about empowering countries to develop their spatial data infrastructures, supporting integration, letting you know that geography and location with technology is important to move forward. And one of the things we're doing in terms of also integration is to have geospatial integrated with statistics. Because when you, when you make your statistics data georeferenced, it opens up a treasure trove of information. Lots of us are busily creating maps, but the maps are one-dimensional. They are show-and-tell maps. The power of GIS is bringing data together from various data sets and go looking across to see what are the correlations between the data sets. And it can only be done by, of course, collaboration, data sharing, having open data policies, and that kind of thing. So those are the things we need to keep in mind in order to move forward. All right, so we looked at the global response with UNGGIM and some of the work and the achievements in terms of our, um, sorry, geodetic network resolution, data sets, and so on, and policy. There are a number of other things also I had failed to speak about. But we have done a number of publication, and this publication, I've carried a number of copies that i leave with you. It's about the use of standards. It was prepared by ISO and OGC together. They're the major standards group. One of the things we recognized was that countries were not aware that lots of standards exist for whatever you're doing. And these two documents, a guide to the role of standards in geospatial information, tells you what is available. And there's a companion document that talks about the standards recommendation by tier. And these are some of the things that are available that you need to know about that you can use if you, maybe you know already, but I'll share that with you. We also recently had passed in August and the adoption of guiding principles for geospatial information. It's some overarching principles where we thought that practitioners within the industry, both government and private, should adopt. And it has to do with innovation, how do you share data, some high-level policy things that should guide us as we go along. And this information, of course, is available at our website. In terms of a regional response, um, Fidel, sorry, Eurisa Caribbean is not there, but Eurisa Caribbean is the local professional society for the Caribbean. And they have been working, you know, there is a biannual Eurisa Caribbean GIS conference, and they try to have capacity building workshops from time to time. And Fidel is a PR person, so I'm sure based on his work, you may know of. Eurisa. Eurisa has been trying to <clears throat> increase knowledge and awareness throughout the Caribbean and their conferences are moved throughout the Caribbean. I think next year's conference will be held in Barbados. Am I correct? 
Yes, so you are all invited to attend. I think the call for papers is out. Free advert for your Caribbean. Anyway, in terms of a regional response, there are many groups working in the Caribbean, and unfortunately, lots of them are focused in South America and Latin America. And an issue here is language. We in the Caribbean are English speakers, and lots of us don't speak a second language. And I encourage you all to learn Spanish. It is important because lots of things are happening. We have PIG, the Pan American Institute for Geography and History. Their geography component focuses a lot on GIS and cartography. You have Sirgus, which is responsible for the regional geodetic network, and Geosur, which provides a port well-based system that allows you access to lots of data from um, geodetic data to things to do with the environment. They focus a lot on accessing data and making it available. And I think Trinidad is a member of GeoSAR, am I correct? Yes. And so those are regional initiatives and you need to be aware of it to be able to access the information that they have to be, to be used because one of the things as Caribbean people, I don't like to say it but in fact it is true, we tend to be insular but we need to be looking outside to see what is happening in other regions because other people are coming into our region to work. We need to be able to know what is happening outside to go outside and also work. How do we create the partnerships with other entities outside of the region to also spread? Because we have developed capacities. I am sure Trinidad has tons of capacities that you have developed that you can leverage and share with other persons. Can I partner with somebody in Jamaica or with somebody in Latin America to bid on a project that I can expand my horizon, that I can grow my local Trinidadian private sector industry? What are the partnerships that exist in terms of public and private sector, in terms of creating applications, developing and growing? Because where the action is these days is not just data creation, that is important, but is the delivery of services, is making the link between IT, information technology, being able to create apps and program. How do we leverage the information? But of course you need to have data which is the blood of behind this GIS that allows you to create the things that you need to do to respond to the needs of your people. So in terms of UNGGM Americas, the first UNGGM Americas meeting was held in October 2014. First I should say that there was, there's a grouping that always met in New York every four years called the Regional Cartographic Conference. In 2012, 2013, they had their 10th meeting. And this was a meeting that anchored the mapping agencies around in the Americas that came together and shared it was like a technical meeting. And we've decided to get, move away from that meeting and it is replaced by the work of UN, UNGGM Americas. They have working groups, and as I said before, this was the last meeting from last week and they had a two-day training course that was peer-headed by UWE St. Augustine and Geotech Vision. And uh, this is a Caribbean project that came out of UNGGI meeting. But I'm going to share this story with you. Bahamas came to the meeting because these meetings were poorly attended by the Caribbean. Maybe three countries from the Caribbean attended the first initial meetings. And the representative from the Bahamas said to me, um, we need support. We have been working at this GIS thing, spatial data infrastructure, for a long time. But we need our government to recognize the importance. Yes, our minister will speak about it. But they don't pay the attention that is required. And we need some help. I felt a little frustrated because where we are, we don't really have resources to support countries in a direct way. So I forwarded his email to the head of UNGGM Americas, Mr. Ocampo from Mexico. And Mr. Ocampo ran with the idea. He, he got some money from his Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He said that 
well, I needed to have a regional body to support it. So he went to the Association of Caribbean States and a project was born with a four-pronged objective. So they're looking at the geodetic framework. So 18 countries, I think less, but 18 countries make up the program, the project. Each country is getting a global navigation satellite station. I think some are getting core station and some are getting rovers depending on the infrastructure that exists. Like for example, Guyana already has a core network so they're, they're not actually getting any of these units. So we're strengthening. So, and the whole idea is to place, and University of the West Indies is integral in this process. So you understand that resources are there to help each other to move forward. And this project was born out of an appeal by one country that is now supporting 18 countries. They're creating land cover maps, they're providing capacity building, and they have found funding to support 18 countries to attend global meetings to be part of the action. Because if you're not there, your voice is not heard, you cannot contribute, you cannot make decisions, and this is where Advocacy is important. So advocacy is important. You come, you get to know persons. You need, you make the links. You, you get twin to another agency and that kind of support. And what is also is important is that your advocates who go, they need to come back and share this information with the general crowd. Sometimes I found in last meeting that this was not really being done. This is an old slide about how different countries in the Caribbean are using geospatial information and having portals. And these are some initiatives that uh, is happening. Last year in Curacao, where we had the Eurasia Caribbean, I was wonderfully heartened because I've been at this thing for a long time and sometimes you know you get a little disheartened because you think that you're moving a too slowly or sometimes you go two step forward and then you step back too because you're not seeing the change that you need to have happen. Well, I was wonderfully happy because based on the reports of the different countries, I am feeling wonderful. Things are moving ahead. Countries are recognizing, maybe even in small ways, that geospatial information is important and their countries are recognizing it and they are doing things and things are changing. I'm very pleased. And one of the important issues is that sometimes we are too much embedded in our science and we talk too much science. And we need to be able, because the challenge is, and everybody talks about it at the UN and locally, how do we influence our decision makers to get on this bandwagon? We, and basically it's not only about money, but it's in, for them to recognize and to understand the importance of geospatial information in the mix of everything. And we need to become advocates. We need to be able to translate our challenges right into a value change for, in order to be able for them to understand. So it, you're, you need to become advocates in what you do to influence the policy agenda, and you can. And one of the things that we are not very good at is documenting what we do in terms of best practices. Do we write papers? They say that we are not readers, but there are different ways. You can do YouTube things. You can share your experiences, your, 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 uh, you can share your experiences, your best practices. You did something in a different way or different method, and you share it with others. You document it. <clears throat> you publish your work and make others aware of your work. And you create compendiums. This is what we have done. And I'm sure there are many examples of this in the entry that, that you need to share and to make. Because our literature is more or less minimal in this in this agenda. We need to be writing more and sharing, whether it is by a video or a paper. So we, we need to be able to influence in the whole agenda. And this is what we have been doing a lot, trying to do from the global perspective, from the regional pr perspective, to move the paradigm of data availability, to make, <clears throat> to make us understand that NSDA is important. 
And one of the things that we're also working, because we're in the statistics division, is that we want to make the census for 2021 that is a digital census, that maps are important. So basically, my thing to you is that to make policy for sustainable development, we need information over time and space. And it is no longer data that you can go and collect and you can put it down. And these days, the applications are moving so rapidly that information is needed instantaneously. So this is just a representation of the variables that can be integrated to consolidate for in terms of the indicators for the sustainable data development process because they'll need all this data to be able to monitor and manage the different variables that they're looking at. And you know that whatever gets measured and managed, that is what gets done. So GIS is a platform for action and you, I don't need to say it, you all know this. In terms of the national response, I found this online. It's a presentation from your statistical agency. But basically what this slide is saying is that the government, the then government of Trinidad and Tobago, they, are, they, are, they know what it means, right, about sustainable development and how it impacts. So as GIS practitioners, is how do we translate and move forward that Sustainable development is important, but it's to make the link between the use of geospatial information and sustainable development, because they are already anchored in the sustainable development process. And uh, I think Bisham will be talking more about SDI and the success factors. This now is a series of slides that just basically talk about what uh, spatial data infrastructures and having access to data is able to do for us. Um, I wanted to point to the bottom box, the crowdsourcing. I don't know how to use the pointer, the blue box at the bottom. These are areas where people are a little hesitant to, to talk about in terms of data going into SDIs. But crowdsourcing big data, they are important. And there are groups that in the UN that are looking at it. It is in its infancy, but a lot of countries in the East are actually using crowdsourced data and big data to support even understanding what people are doing in their country to help them to plan and to respond. It is important. We use data for you know, managing crime, operations management. It's a map of floods in that side of the world that is always inundated by floods. And it is important, we only can, agencies that stand alone and create data, they need to be able to share data with other, access data from other entities. This is an example from Belize that shows planning for schools and where schools are, where students go. Um, I know in Jamaica they are now moving towards children going to schools in the area where they live. It is getting a lot of resistance, but I'm sure, sure if they showed some maps that told you the location of schools, students, the cohorts, age cohorts, it will help them in selling the whole idea. But of course, they talk about the quality of schools, so that is also another issue. But it's a big thing that is done in the developed world about assigning students to schools and you know, transporting them, reducing traffic. I mean, at 2 o'clock when schools are out, it is impossible to get anywhere. And it is not only in Trinidad, it is everywhere in the world where they don't have proper planning and districting for schools and how children move from school to home, that kind of thing. And we need to plan, and GIS helps us to do this. Another example of solid waste management in Bangladesh Lots of us are aware of what it means, like in very huge cities, uh, the collection and distribution of garbage. GIS has allow us to do it. Optimal locations for waste disposal. How do we organize the routes? One night I was standing like at 10 o'clock going home in New York, and I saw this very huge long trailer and a huge horrible smell after. And I was saying, what is this? And this was garbage that was being collected, that was moved at a special time of the night to the waste disposal sites outside of New York that generates tons of garbage daily. 
healthy environment. These are the things that our governments are interested in. What I realized about these maps, these maps are showing one variable of Trinidad and Tobago. Not a lot. But we able to be we, we need to be able to, I'm again saying, access data from other entities to share data. The map to the left of Jamaica is actually showing gastroenteritis cases against poverty, um, poverty districts in, down, in Kingston generally. And you'll see that downtown Kingston where you usually have squalor and the ghettos, those are urban blighted areas. That's the area where you have poor sanitation, and so you can see the correlations. The health authorities now can go in and to address the cases. So this is the power of GIS, but, but we need to access data from others to share data. Because this is a combination of data from our Planning Institute of Jamaica and also information from our health authorities that's being put together. And I think they also collect information from the police. So all agencies work together to make some of this map possible. And another example of watershed management in Spain, and the whole, the key thing was the efficient management and maintenance of water, used the high accuracy DTM models, and the economic benefits, always important. New Zealand is a special case. New Zealand, when I was doing GIS work in Jamaica, I referenced Australia and New Zealand for a lot of stuff because they were thought leaders and you know, first world in terms of what happened. But they realized after the earthquake in 2010, 2011, that their, their act need, they needed to get together, get their act together. And because they found out when they had to respond to that earthquake, that the coordination sharing agreements did not exist and that they had no common data model models, the use of standards was not as what they wished it to be. And so post earthquake, their government allocated a couple million dollars, which they used to create eight projects, which were all aimed to address the challenges they identified. And some of the projects were interoperability, how imp important it was to share data, particularly among utilities. Because of course, in Jamaica, we had that case where the Water Commission created their own data set, the electric company created their data set, they didn't want to share it and that kind of thing. And there are so many synergies and savings to be made if you share across the utilities. Um, in terms of property data, they didn't have a proper management framework. They realized that they needed open data support and they needed to be able to discover the data. And uh, one of the things that came out was that technology is not, was not the issue. What the issue was, the people. The people are usually the issues because we, 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 we tend to ha hug things to ourselves. We tend to it's my data, I used my resources to create it, and if you're going to get it, I have to sell it to you, and that kind of thing. Does it support national goodwill? These are the questions we need to ask. And in, in closing, I have a couple of slides, but in closing, I want to share with you that you're in a wonderful industry. I believe the outlook is great. When there was an economic downturn, the GIS there was no downturn in the GIS industry. It's a multi-million dollar industry. But we need to be able to put in place from the government side, the different stakeholders, the GIS society is doing its thing. You, as the individual practitioner, the government, need all to all work together to make a vibrant GI industry for Trinidad and Tobago. You need to become a part of the pie to access that $40 billion, billion dollars that is outside there working. And uh, it's not just in software and so it is in services, creating the services, making the data accessible, right? So you need to be part of it. You need to look at it. So hibernation is not an option. We cannot stay in our silos. We need to be thinking outside the box. We need to be able to actualize, to leverage what we have, identify our strengths as a country, as a people. Or at your ICT infrastructure is good. 
um, you may not agree in certain cases, but it is good generally for a country your size. And how do we leverage that ICT infrastructure? Because this is where the innovation comes from. And how do you use it? How do you adapt? You cannot be, it cannot be business as usual. You need to be agile. We know that governments tend to be bureaucratic and stodgy, but we can make the changes, although incremental. It happened in Jamaica for me. We start, I started as a single consultant, and I, we morphed into, a, over a couple of years, into eight, eight persons making up a unit. I actually stole somebody's secretary, and it is how you go about doing it. And, but you need to have the institutional structures and the frameworks to make it happen. One of the good things about Jamaica was that we had a, a government that stayed in power for four consecutive terms. And I think that was one of our staying points. So we were able, with the support of that administration, continue. Uh, and our, and there, in terms of our structure, there were two levels. The Land Information Council had an executive body, and you had a technical body. The executive body that were made up of like the permanent secretaries and the high power people, they were supposed to meet every quarter. I cannot tell you if they met once or twice per year, but the technical group met every single month except in December, and they were able to continue the work, although in increments, and we would make the presentations whenever we got the opportunity to the powers that be. And so we moved on slowly but surely to where we are today, a, a division that is responsible and recognized for national spatial data infrastructure in Jamaica. But it came down to leadership and stick to itiveness and staying the course and recognizing that this thing about GIS is important for national development. I remember when somebody said to me, they saw me like 10 years ago and we were just starting and they said, you're still in GIS? Mm. And they made up their face as if, boy, I don't understand how you're so long with this thing. But today I, I, I can stand here and feel satisfied to some extent to say, that my stick to stick to itiveness was supportive of growing our industry in Jamaica. So what I'm saying to you is that you need to continue to press forward and to create your partnerships that between your public private sector, the work that your GIS society support them, they're doing wonderful work. And with your support, you can transform and become knowledge-driven entities, because that is where it is in terms of the innovation, the applications, the new things of doing things. And so my takeaway points to you, and most importantly, the global agenda is changing. Our governments at the global level, we are trying to influence the process. For sustainable development, this new round, because I said the Millennium Development Goals, we did not achieve those targets. And the reason why we didn't achieve those targets is that we did not have the data to inform the process and make the decisions. This time around, we are trying to embed geos the importance of geospatial information in the whole sustainable development process. It's important to be able to measure and to monitor. We have satellite imagery, earth observation data, different ways of capturing data, the use of uh, tablets, your cell phone, empowering citizens, big data, social media, all these things are driving forward the need for us to use. Everybody uses geospatial data. They may not know, but they are using it. And it's for us to leverage that information. So we hope that we can influence governments to understand the importance of focusing on collecting geospatial data to inform our sustainable development process because then it will be embodied in our policy making, in our national development plans, and it will be, become a point where it is on our national books that this is the operational plan, this is our strategy, we need to move forward. So the next step, I don't know if you have it already, Bisham, is to have your national geospatial strategy. 
and it is documented and everybody agrees on it. You have your national consultation. We're moving forward. This is what we want to achieve as Trinidad and Tobago. And this is how our country will grow. Just like how you have a national spatial plan or a national energy plan, you need to have a national spatial plan. And how does it dovetail? So this is ammunition for you to now advocate that in order for us to achieve our sustainable development targets, we need to have the geospatial data sets to support this, whether it is in environment, whether it is in road construction, all the different indicators need geospatial data to support the decisions you make. And the country has to report on its progress and what it is doing. And in, integral is being able to share information, to integrate information. It makes no sense. Is you sit in your corner, in the left and in the right, and we do not come together to share information. So your national sharing policy, sometimes the sharing happens, you know, at uh, the technical level. But some people are afraid, oh, my CEO, if they know that I gave you the data, I'll get in trouble. So we need to have open plans, in open agreements in terms of sharing our data. You show the value proposition in terms of the savings it will make to our country, how it is important that it will impact quite a number of initiatives across your country. And of course, a lot of people say that you need enabling legislation. Many countries have done it without legislation. Other countries have recognized that they need to do it. In the Caribbean, the Bahamas have gone ahead and passed theirs, but they're still having problems. Why? They still need to share and coordinate because the agencies don't yet recognize that it is important. So you can have legislation and still no coordination. So it comes down to people. I think my time has gone, they have not said anything to me, but regardless. <laughs> and another important issue that I leave with you is that governments cannot do it, do it alone, private sector cannot do it alone. You need to have a public-private sector partnership. It has been shown in many, many instances, and I'm sure you have cases here in Trinidad that supports this adage but we need to have more of it. Identify the opportunities and say what you want because you also should not feel that you cannot influence the process. You can influence the process because you need to say, well, if data is not available, because the open data initiative is very, very, it's a growing initiative where countries in the developed world, Canada, the UK, some countries in the East, they have embraced it. And it has created spin-off businesses and innovation where they have used private firms, start, small startup firms have been using this data to create lots of things, unimaginable things that you did not ever thought that could, could, could be done. And uh, I think it was in Canada I was reading that they were creating so many applications that government no longer needed to be supporting. Things like um, apps to tell you where parks were and riding trails for recreational purposes. This is usually the remit of maybe forestry or tourism. But the private sector was taking on these things. So government can concentrate on its core responsibilities. And this was only, a, this was only possible with making your geospatial data open to be used. Of course, you know that there are certain data sets that you will not make available. Some basic ones you need to make available. And, but you as users need to advocate to have that made available. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening, although I saw some sleepy heads, but I, was, I hope I was able to share a few things with you in terms of moving forward. I think that you have, it's a wonderful time. The global situation is ripe for supporting your work and that you should seize the opportunity and move forward. There's a lot of things happening, I understand, in Trinidad, but you just need to work together to make it happen. Thank you very much.